Last week, I read an opinion piece by a climate scientist who writes, if you knew what I know, you'd be terrified too. Well, I read it and I'm still standing upright rather than flat in bed screaming into a pillow. Did I do something wrong? Should I be terrified? Should you be terrified? Should we all be terrified? Let's have a look. I had high expectations when I read Bill McGuire's article on the CNN opinion page. Nothing quite like a little bit of existential dread to go with breakfast. But the only new thing the article taught me is that there was a recent study in the UK which found that, quote, scary images of wildfires and other climate-related catastrophes around the world were effective at cultivating climate anxiety. Oh, great. And that they spurred people to adopt measures that help to reduce emissions. Basically, this climate scientist is advocating that we scare people into action. Hey, let's start a climate horror movie night to save the planet. This mindset is concerningly widespread. For example, also just last week, I saw a press release from researchers at Penn State, which says virtual reality better than video for evoking fear spurring climate action. And the study findings may help advocacy groups to decide how to best frame and deliver their messages. I'm indeed terrified, terrified that scientists support manipulating people. I mean, you expect that from advocacy groups, that they'll try to appeal to your emotions rather than reasoning. But I'd wish that scientists stick with informing people. So let me give you some information about the climate developments in the past month, and then you can make up your own mind about whether it's time to be terrified. The last year was the warmest on record in terms of global temperatures. It also saw a peculiar temperature anomaly in the North Atlantic Ocean where temperatures went off the charts. The global temperature records have continued into this year and so has the temperature anomaly in the Atlantic Ocean, though at the moment it looks like at least it stopped to further increase. Part of the record temperatures can be attributed to a natural climate fluctuation known as the Southern Oscillation that switches back and forth between a warmer El Niño phase and a colder La Niña phase. Last year, we switched to the warmer one. These phases typically last one or two years, but according to a projection from NOAA just last week, the current warmer phase is weakening already and it now looks like we're going to switch back to the colder one by the summer. Together with the expected regression to the mean, this makes it somewhat unlikely that this year will be much hotter than the previous one. What's with this temperature anomaly in the North Atlantic Ocean? Climate scientists have considered various possible causes, such as a decline in emissions from ships after a change of law in 2020 or an underwater volcano eruption. However, other scientists say that these influences wouldn't be large enough to explain the observation. So basically, no one knows, but clearly it's a aliens installing hot tubs underwater. Just wait until RV Loeb gets on the case. What this means is that at the moment it's unclear whether these are normal fluctuations or an indicator for a trend that no one expected. Some climate scientists say it might be that global warming is accelerating. Some say the observations are still within the range of what to expect if the current climate models are right. In January, I told you that there had been a paper by Hansen and collaborators saying that climate scientists have underestimated the equilibrium climate sensitivity. The equilibrium climate sensitivity, in a nutshell, tells you how quickly the world will warm. The Hansen et al. study was a reanalysis of old data, by which I mean, you know, fossil records and ice cores and stuff. There has now been another study of data in the more recent past since the 1980s. They confirm that it's possible that current climate models have in bulk underestimated how fast temperatures will increase. It's because many of these climate models aren't particularly good at getting the temperature distribution in oceans right. It's kind of a known problem. In the new paper, they say that this issue with the ocean temperatures has the effect that the real world reacts slower to the increase in carbon dioxide than the models. So if you were trying to fit the model to the data, you'd have to use a lower climate sensitivity and then you 
you get the future predictions wrong. If that's right, then we'll probably see more temperature records soon. In case that was too many words, it's bad news. I feel like we're at a crucial moment in the history of human civilization. This year or next year, we'll find out just how badly we've screwed up our planet. I wouldn't say I'm terrified, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed that we cause ourselves unnecessary trouble and I'm even more disappointed that some scientists are contributing to this by advocating that we scare people into action. This might work for some people for some time, all right, but they'll end up feeling manipulated because that's what it is. It's manipulation. Appealing to emotion just increases polarization at a time when we all need to sit together and think rationally about the least bad choice we can make. Should you be terrified? I think you shouldn't let anyone tell you what you should feel. Personally, I think a better way to motivate people is to show them what we can do when we work together. And the best example that I can think of is Planet Wild. Planet Wild is a community-based organization that restores ecosystems with dedicated missions. It's crowdfunded environmental protection, basically. And unlike many organizations that take your money and you have no idea what happens with it, Planet Wild documents that progress in detail with videos that you can watch on their app or right here on YouTube. I joined Planet Wild earlier last year and it's been a pleasure to see their progress. They've done some amazing things from repopulating a forest with a Eurasian lynx to restoring monocultures in the Scottish Highlands to their natural biodiversity. Just imagine how much they could improve our world if they had more supporters. The potential is enormous. And so rather than being terrified, have a look at Planet Wild and consider supporting them. It takes as little as $6 a month to save a forest here or a species there. And if you change your mind later, don't worry, you can cancel your membership every month. If you're not quite sure, how about this? I'll cover the first month of your subscription if you're among the first 500 to use the code Sabina23. You can learn more about Planet Wild on their YouTube channel, which has some pretty amazing videos. So go and check it out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.